Hello Trailblazers! Today we're going to talk about efficiency on where you should be spending your Trailblaze power between level 30 to 40 and 40 to 50. A lot of you guys have already been getting level 40 and you guys have been asking me consistently what should I be farming, what should I be prioritizing. Now if you guys don't know, we did upload a video talking about what to prioritize from level 1 to 30. If you guys haven't seen that, I'd highly suggest taking that a look if you guys are new to Honkai Star Rail. But the game's been out for three weeks. Everyone's kind of power leveling through their Trailblaze level. We're going to talk about what I think you should farm and what you should prioritize and what I myself am personally going to be focusing on as I slowly creep my way up to Trailblaze level 50. All right, so once you hit TL 30 now, first and foremost, you should be focusing on leveling up your characters to 50, farm the ascension materials that you do need to get them just the bare minimum to 50, get your light cones leveled up to 50 as well, as well as your traces to four. I'd only recommend this for like your carry characters, so like DPS. Uh, we have Natasha here at four as well. Defense characters like Japard, Fire, MC, support. So if you're running like Asta for ultimate, stuff like that, all right? Trace material farming early game, you guys will notice, feels like a pain. So try and work with what you got. Level up those traces to like four. Get those bonus abilities for the ones that do matter. We have videos talking about like bonus abilities for individual characters. And then relics. Stay away from relics at TL30. You're not going to be getting any gold relics at TL30. Instead, once you hit TL30, you are able to farm gold relics. And this is where most, if not all, of my Trailblaze power ended up going from TL30 to TL40. I spent nothing but my time on World 5 and World 6. More often, World 6. I spent like 90% of my Trailblaze power on World 6. So you get these 5-star relics at TL30. You have an effect hit rate for your Nihility characters. This one, I'd stay away from. But World 6 is really good value. You have a defense set that's good for Japard, Fire MC, and March 7th. As well as, you have a crit set that does work with ultimate and follow-up. So it's good for your damage dealers like Don Hung, uh, Su Shang. Good for Jin Yuen coming out in the future as well if you guys are trying to pre-farm for him. Good for Clara. It's an overall good DPS two-piece relic set that you can farm so if you guys are tl30 and you guys have finished farming level 50 and level 50 weapons and your traces a little bit leveled up like for your dps and some of your supports to four then focus everything else on world six and just farm these gold relics that's the best value that you could possibly get at that time in my opinion now if you do feel like you're running short on resources aka you want to level up characters and get a jump start once you hit TL40 and you're able to level you up to 60. The you could also go to the Forgotten Halls. They give a lot of resources, as you can see, when you do it for the first time, first time clearers. You're also more than welcome to just farm anything yourself. I want to give a quick disclaimer because I don't think I did that at the beginning of the video. This is a single player game. It is a PvE experience. I can only talk about the things that I prioritized and the things that I think are most efficient for the Trailblaze power. Do what you want to do. Um, but I'm just kind of giving you my experience. So I got a lot of these resources from Memory of Chaos or Forgotten Halls. I didn't really need to hit up any of the Calyx things. I didn't need to hit up any Light Cone stuff. I haven't farmed any of those since uh, 1 to 30. I spent my 1 to 30 pre-farming those 30 to 40. Strictly just simulated Universe World 6. But if you do feel like you're running a little bit low, then by all means, do what you got to do to prep yourself for level 40. All right, so as you are passively leveling up and finally getting to TL40, you do unlock gold relics, but hold on, wait, just a moment. First of all, take care of your homework. Do level up your characters to 60 for your main DPS, your supports like your tanks, and preferably your healer. Understand, you want to make sure you close that level gap you have with your character versus the enemies because they are going to be hitting you like a truck and one tapping you before you can even do damage you know of course you can buff your damage with relics but if you're dying you can't really do any damage if you're dead right so focus on your character levels first and foremost obviously get your dps to 60 get some supports like tanks to 60 and your healers to 60 same goes for the light cones it only takes like three days i think is what it took me to get most of my characters to 60. afterwards focus on what's going to guarantee you a damage increase aka traces yes they're kind of asked to farm right now they're not the greatest in the world however i would recommend stopping at like five i stopped at five for the big ones here for my alt and my skill on su shang 
I'm not going to worry about the basic attack or the talent at the moment. I'm going to wait until TL50 because traces will get a little bit better. It's fine. It's fair enough at the moment. There's better, more efficient things to farm. And then my Natasha, I kept her at four. So I'm running most of my characters on four and then five. Supports at four. DPS at five. Japard, his ultimates at four. Main character, his taunts at six. But that's mainly because of the, um, the Eidolon we end up getting. So technically it is four. But you get my point, right? Traces kind of suck to farm at the moment but i'd bare minimum get them to like five and then you should be fine until tl50 on that and then last but not least it's time to have some fun with relics now do keep in mind when you are farming these gold relics only go for the main stat all right don't get too greedy it does cost 40 trailblaze power to actually farm this you're going to be spending an eternity here and then you won't be able to actually prepare for tl50 I am currently TL45. I'm halfway there. I'd probably say once you hit TL45, probably come to a stop on farming relics and try and focus on other stuff because we're going to get into what happens after TL50. Once you hit, it gets very cost heavy on leveling characters from 60 to 70. And you want to make sure you always try and level up at least eight characters because you're going to be running Memory of Chaos where you split your teams into two different parties. So having eight characters leveled up all at the same time is pretty much ideal two tanks two heals two hunt characters your damage dealers and some supports thrown into the mix so always keep that in mind if you are going to be farming relics which i do recommend you can start only focus on main stat here and just settle with whatever else you got so most of my artifacts as you can tell i'm trying to farm for genuine coming out i got unlucky with this i got unlucky with that i got unlucky yet again with another piece but i may have to settle on this it's an HP set. It's going to be HP on the main stat anyways. I can't get too greedy, all right? And also, don't be shy. If you are farming relics for future characters coming out like Jin Yuen, it's okay to use four stars as well, right? We have a phenomenal pair of speed boots. It's a four star crit and crit damage as a substats. I'm most likely going to be using that. There's no shame in using some of the four stars if you're getting unlucky with the five stars because I get it. I'm trying to farm a tank set and I get nothing but attack, HP, and effect hit rate as my chest pieces and legs you know alternatively if you do want to farm some other relics as well and you want to take a break from that there is sim universe after you get tl4 you unlock difficulty 2 for world 3 and 4 and world 2 is good because it does have a support set two piece increases your hp by 12 percent but also increases all allies attack by another eight percent just remember always go for the main stats now and then you can focus on like sub stats and prioritizing and min maxing probably once you hit tl50 when you're able to get at least two gold relics there's a chance of getting that okay so now once you hit that halfway mark level 45 out of 50 this is the moment where i'm kind of pulling the plug on farming relics that i'm thinking about oh shit i need to actually farm light cones and X xp to level up my characters and start pre-farming for them now there are good ways to pre-farm traces are not one of them I don't think farming traces is actually good value, mainly because you only get like two drops of this. It's not a guaranteed blue. It gets better later on. I personally think you should be hitting up the butt of memories for the XP, the ether, and credits. You're at difficulty four out of five, if you can see on the left side. You're losing about 20% value, and that's it, right? So if we take a look at the butt of treasures here and take a look to see how many credits we're getting, we're currently getting 20,000 credits for the four difficulty. Level five is 4,000 more credits. So you're only losing 20% value if you farmed for credits right now versus if you wanted to actually try and farm traces, let's say like the hunt path, right? If I did one run here, I could theoretically end up getting only two of these, right? But if I waited until difficulty five, you'd get a guaranteed blue and then some change. You're losing 100% value by farming right now versus waiting until TL50. Now you could end up getting lucky. I got lucky earlier today. I farmed one run, I got one of these, and then I got three of these, which was like 200% more value than what I normally get. But the risk to reward is just not worth it, especially if you've already got your traces up to five. Five is a good stopping point. You're still gonna be doing a lot of damage. I would personally wait, pre-farm some of the other stuff because you're not losing as much value and it's better value and then you can farm traces to six plus seven if you want once you get to tl50 i think six is going to be a good stopping point for most people anyways right 
All right, so now with all of that being said, I did pre-farm for Jin Yuan. As you can tell, I did farm a lot of his trace materials. It was a pain to do. It took me a couple of days given the drop rate of the, the bud of erudition or the keys. However, I'm a content creator. I wanted to try and show him off the moment he comes out. We are taking a look at all my XP stuff. I'm TL45. I'm probably getting TL50 in like a week, right? Put it into consideration, leveling up a character from 60 to 70, if they're a four-star character, is going to cost you 66 purple books. Now multiply that by eight for eight characters, which you want to work on. That's going to cost you 528 purple books. I am nowhere close to 528 books. And I am what a week away from tl50 i am not ready yeah light cones for example 36 light cones for one four star light cone to go from 60 to 70 once i hit tl50 288 for eight light cones right and you want to keep working on that core eight characters because of memory of chaos so you can keep progressing in that and keep farming other stuff and more resources all right, so if you take a look at my credits right here, I have 2 million credits, yeah? Let's talk about how many credits you're gonna need to level all these up. You need 200,000 credits, or 196,000 credits to go from 60 to 70, and that's just for one character. You need 212,000, and we're talking five-star character to go from 60 to 70, 167,000 credits per four star light cone going from 60 to 70 and then it gets a little bit more if you're a five star light cone 209,000 credits to go from 60 to 70. it's very cost heavy as you guys can tell now there are some ways you can farm for credits i'm going to throw some into the suggestion box here uh if you guys are farming simulated universe and doing your 34 runs i think it's 33 or 34 runs a week you can end up getting yourself 272,000 credits just by doing simulated universe it takes like 15 minutes per run if you're running like the hunt path alternatively because we just talked about the bud of memories or whatever it's called for the credit one the calyx you can end up getting 480,000 credits a day so 480,000 credits a day that's 3.3 million credits a week that you're able to get for your account and you guys are going to realize leveling up your characters from 67 is going to be very cost heavy so once you hit tl45 rank i would obviously try to recommend pushing towards pre-farming your characters to get at least a couple of them maybe not all eight of them you'll have there in time but at least like a core six two dps two tanks like get those five leveled up and then some supports thrown into the mix all right so just for some closing thoughts here just to reiterate we have two million credits it takes 1.5 million credits for eight characters assuming they're all four star characters and you're going from 60 to 70. it takes 1.3 million credits to go from level 60 to 70 for four star light cones for eight light cones obviously i don't have enough and clearly i don't have 528 xp books i don't have 288 refined ethers but you know what i do got a whole lot of copium with my relics so like i said don't over farm relics get the bare minimum get your get your main stat and then you should be fine and then focus on what you should be prioritizing the stuff will that will guarantee your characters get a big damage increase aka light cones and the character level all right now with all of that being said on pre-farming character xp light cone xp and credits the one thing that i am not going to pre-farm and this might be very confusing is going to be the ascension materials that you need to level the character up and the main reason is because i can always just focus on leveling one character up a day based off of how many of these materials you get you end up getting three right now at tl40 and then you end up getting four at tl50 now if i wanted to farm right now i'm going to be farming for Japart. it's going to take me seven runs to get 20 of these right for a five star character whereas if i just waited until tl50 i only need to do five runs each run costs 30 trailblaze power that's 60 trailblaze power that you are giving up just to try and pre-farm that when you could have just done that in the same exact day right you can do five runs in a day five times 30 is 150 you're gonna have that trailblaze power at your disposal but again another disclaimer everyone's experience is going to be different there is no wrong or right way to farm in my opinion end game once like a year goes by hell even like a couple months six months it won't even matter all right i just wanted to make this video to people who like want to know why i'm farming things the reason behind it how much trailblaze power you could essentially save different values 
and do like the whole spiel on that. You don't have to copy me. This is your game. This is your experience. It's a PvE game at the end of the day. And your experience will be a little bit different if you are using the Battle Pass. Because the Battle Pass does give you like three to four times more resources compared to a free-to-play. Well, with that being said, I hope this does help anyone who is trying to figure out what they want to focus on. Maybe clear their mind a bit for TL30 to TL40 and TL40 to TL50. And that's my jump start on TL50 once we do end up hitting that. Maybe I'll do an updated video once I hit TL50 and figure out if I end up changing what I want to farm. Let me know down below. Hope this video helped. Thank you guys very much for watching. Join us over on Twitch. We're live every day. Feel free to ask us anything over there as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.